Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at rank cipher setups on Bind and its playstyle on this map. First, let's have a look at A-Site. I'll go over a few camera placements first. The first camera I tend to use on this map is on this wall here. You want to be on this window ledge to place it so you can get it as high up as possible. You can get it just on that little ledge there. This gives you a great view of the whole site as well as both entrances. It is pretty obvious. But when someone's pushing from this angle, there's loads of angles to check so they don't always see it up here. If this camera gets destroyed a lot, you can try and place it on this wall. But if they see that one, they're likely to see that one too. This one gives you a bit more of a view of this corridor. A nicely hidden cam is if you jump on here and then place it high up on this wall. It gives you a great view of anyone as they enter site. So say if you've had to rotate to B site to help and then they rotate back to A. You can see where they're planting because it sees the common plant spots and if they're entering from showers or from uh, A short. And obviously it gives you a view of view hall if they're playing in and out of here. You can try to place a cam here as it'll be behind them as they push but it's pretty obvious once you hear the clicking noise so if you're activating it as they're here they'll be able to hear you activate it and just shoot it. You can also use your camera in showers so you can put it on this wall and you can see if they're pushing towards this door or you can put it here and you can see as they come in here again they might be able to hear this one if you activate it whilst they're close by next let's have a look at tripwires so my first tripwire I always like to place is here it's at a height where the enemies can't get past it under it or over it so they either have to trigger it or destroy it so it will notify you if they're coming through showers I like putting it here because it means that they can't like, peek into sight here and sort of catch anyone off guard if they're not quite watching showers. So if there's a distraction in A short and they try and sneak in and get an angle on someone, this trap wire will notify you that they're here and you can call out to your team that they're coming. It also works well later in the round if someone's trying to rotate through showers to sneak up on your team because they'll come to this and either have to walk back or destroy it. You could use a trip wire here because this will stop them coming into sight and it's very hard to destroy. They either have to wall bang it or just walk into it. But if you place it there, they can be in this position or even this position, holding anyone peeking from window or holding anyone hiding behind this box. This is why I don't like this one as much as the one that notifies me when they're there. This one gets destroyed a lot, but it still gives you tons of information. If I want to trap white A short, there's a few you can do, just that one. Or you can place it off here. You used to be able to place it off this side. I'm not sure if you still can. Oh yeah, there we go. Any of those. This one obviously lets them get into the teleport if they want. There's a slight problem with these that it's pretty common for explosives to be chucked this way so they get destroyed by that. So if they are keeping getting destroyed, I tend to use one to stop people getting to U-Haul. So if this person, if someone's playing in U-Haul and they get pushed back, you'll still know if someone's creeping there. A couple of extra wires, you can place one here. If they don't want to plant it in this spot, they'll have to go through it. And obviously you can place a load off these boxes. If you're playing away from sight and you want to play like a retake strategy, you can use those to stop people coming into sight from showers. Next, let's have a look at save cages. The obvious ones is one in this doorway and one in this entrance. So these are just to stall enemy pushes basically. So I'd say both of them, if they're trying to rush, it would just give your teammates a bit of time to rotate and help. There are actually a few one-way cages you can do. So you can jump up here, aim just inside here, bounces down, activate it. You can just about see under it if they're walking through, but it does the same like line of sight blocking job as having it on the floor, so you may as well use it there. The second one-way cage is very aggressive and it doesn't block a line of sight, but it can get you kills easily, so maybe use it once or twice a game to catch the enemies off guard. So you come here, look straight down, and you aim at this corner where it's touching the mud. Look straight up, and then you want to place your cosh there just to the right and up of this corner. There you go. And then you have an angle onto anyone's feet as they push around that corner. If you're trying to support someone in U-Haul, you could always just use your cyber cage here. Because using it there, they won't want to push through it, so it'll sort of funnel them into sight. So if you've got people holding power positions in sight, that can be a useful cage. So quickly, let's just look at a standard setup in hole. So place one cam here. 
come over to here. Place this one my cage. I tend to trip wire here um, until it gets destroyed. If it gets destroyed a couple of times, I'll move it and then just pop a cyber cage here. And then once the round starts, I'll place this trip wire. To get the most out of this setup, I normally play behind this box because then you can use it to watch both entrances. Make sure you call if people are sort of around this corner, like if they push up to the teleporter, because your teammates can sometimes chuck like molotovs and stuff to push them out. And when you, they push them out, you can shoot them. But yeah, so you can play here and then either peek here or peek around here. You could also play from U-Haul, holding this angle. Just make sure you check your camera to see if they're pushing from there or obviously your trip wire and you can just activate it, stall enemy pushes and let your team rotate around sight more freely. So obviously they block line of sight as well as slowing the enemy. The final good thing about this setup is that if the enemy team have been pushing B pretty hard and then you rotate over to B to help and then they do either teleport over or if they run back through mid, this setup notifies you if they're coming from showers or if they're coming from A short and you can use your camera to activate the cages just to slow them down a couple of seconds, giving your team a few seconds just to get across. Although this site's not too bad to retake anyway, but that's why this setup's so good that it works as both a stalling early in the game and also information later on in the game. Next, let's have a look at B site. There are tons of camera spots around here, so one nice one is this one. Jump up over here, put your camera here, gives you a view of people pushing up B long as well as the site in general. Oh, fell off. You can put your camera along here, which makes it harder for them to spot it either side. One I quite like, which isn't commonly spotted, is just to pop a camera up here. It's just a pretty unexpected one, so if you're playing behind the box in the middle of sight, you'll be able to see once they push into this area and peek them with knowledge about their positioning. You can do a pretty similar thing here. You can either place it on the back wall, and you'll be able to peek them either from the back of spawn or from behind the box. Well, there's actually a spot behind this cushion. Let's see if I can get it. And you can see through it like it's not there, but it's harder for them to see. They'll be able to hear it if they're too close to it, but it lets you see people coming into hooker anyway. If you're playing more aggressively, you can also place the camera there with a view of uh, mid as well as people coming into hooker. So you can either play around this corner or here. Say if you've only got a shotgun, you could play around this corner, see as they come in, bang bang. Whilst we're here, we might as well talk about tripwires. I don't normally like tripwiring here because I wouldn't really want to play in hooker. But if you're playing with a shotgun, say if you've lost the first round and you want to get an easy cheeky pick, this one and then swing either as they activate or try and destroy this trip wire. You could also put a cyber cage there. So as they come in, they activate or destroy the trip wire. You activate the cage, shoot them, maybe try and pick up their gun because the line of sight's blocked and then run off. And then you've got a decent gun. But in general, I'll place my trip wires closer here. So you can either put them here to notify you when they're sort of walking up to the window. You can actually put them in the window itself so as they jump through it will catch them, making them quite an easy target. Although because they stand quite close to the window, it's pretty common for them to notice it before they even trigger it. I'll then generally trip while either the entrance to site from garden, or you can place one here, so you'll be notified as they walk in. Or you can place one off this box here, so they think, oh look, I'm safe as I come in and they'll be here in the open, and then you'll catch them. Although this one can be uh, jumped over. If you're playing further back in sight, no one's actually holding garden, you can move this tripwire back here, so someone can't just sneak past here and come in. Omens like to teleport, like double smoke, and then teleport from here to here and then go round elbow, so this one will stop them doing that. There are also, so like you could place one here to stop the common plant spot, just to catch them off guard. Same with this side. Finally, let's have a look at the cage placement. So I talked about the one in the uh, doorway here, but I normally put one on this ledge just because it 
completely blocks the line of sight. And if they do jump down, you'll be able to hear them and just spray them through it. And then I'll also normally put a cage here. Again, block line of sight and slow enemy pushes. There are a couple of one way cages, so you can play up here, aim just inside this lip, bounces down. So that one, you can only use it as one way cage from here and it doesn't cover the right hand side, but you'll be able to see the enemy players just through there when it's not like flashing down. So maybe if you're got like a jet or someone with you, they can jump up here, you can activate it and they can use it as a one way smoke. But in general, it blocks the line of sight. So it's pretty much as good as putting one on the ledge. There's another one way smoke, so you can put it going here. You aim at the middle and then go up until it's level with here. There we Lance up there. And for this one, you have to be playing in this cubby. And as they push up, you'll be able to see their feet. I'm not the biggest fan of this one, although it's a really cool one way smoke. It like it doesn't block any decent lines of sight, and if they get past it before you activate it, it's pretty much useless because they can just come this side of it and push in, and they'll be able to see you as well as you can see them. Another one way smoke you maybe want to use maybe once or twice a game is if you walk into this corner, then aim above this window at the ledge here. And then if you're playing in cubby, as they jump out the window, you can trigger it and you'll be able to see their feet. It doesn't really block any good lines of sight, uh, it's sort of a one trick one rather than having multiple uses, but it can catch people off guard if they keep on attacking through hooker probably. So if I'm trying to set up for this site, my first cab I normally use is up here, just because it gives you such good information, but if they destroy it I'll mix up with the other cams. The ones behind the attacking pushes rarely get shot out, so they're good if they keep on shooting all the cams around the top of the site. I'll then try and use my tripwire in the window like this, just because it's such an easy kill. I'll then use one of my cages up here. And then after the prep phase again, you can place this one. And then one cage here. So for this, I'll either play behind this box, as you can see as they push up be long or here as they go into hooker and then you can activate that if you need to get out of sight just make sure that you're checking that they're not in this angle and then you'll be notified by your tripwire as soon as they come into garden so you can either activate your cage or challenge them depending on how your team like close your team is to you if they need to rotate they need a bit more time just activate both your cages just to stall the push a bit you can also play from the back of sight here if I'm playing from the back of sight, I tend to use my camera in a place where you can actually look into hooker. So I'll use it like up here instead, just so I have a bit of information before I peek, or I'll be using it inside of hooker itself. One camera I did forget to mention is you can pop it above here. This has a lovely view of sight. It's especially good if you're retaking, although you don't really want to be retaking the site because it's very hard because you either get funnel through there or funnel through a hooker, which is pretty easy for the attacking team to defend. But this one, great view of sight, but also if they're on the edge of window, you can see them. So if you can play from the back here, and you see that they're either side of the window, you can quickly peek out, pre-aim them and kill them. In general for bind, it's probably better for cypher players to play on B site, just because it's so difficult to retake if the enemy team do plant the spike. So you want your best defender on this site. So you normally want you and someone who has smoke denial just to slow enemy pushes or maybe a sage to ice off the areas because if the enemy team get the bomb planted on this site your team's pretty much screwed so you want three people on A normally, two on B but your two best defenders on B. And remember that it's not all just about kills, sometimes it's just needed to stall because if you can get your team to come and help if you get four of your team to come and defend this site it's pretty easy to defend because you can get one person here someone behind the boxes someone in spawn and it's a lot harder for them to push in if it's like that but if you just get rushed with two people and don't use your utility to slow them down and you just both get killed or even if you retreat if all of your team are pushing through this corridor if they have a sage they just wall it off or they slow it down or they can use smokes on this door or just like molotovs and stuff just to stop you coming in and it takes such a long time to rotate all the way through mid and you're very loud if you come through teleporter so it's a lot easier if you can 
like have control of sight and slow enemy pushes to get your team to help you rather than just back away from this site because then you're pretty much screwed for that round. I'd also say try not to too quickly rotate away from B to A only if they're getting very overrun or you know that everyone's at A because they could just be baiting you to come to A so they can go and quickly sneak into B to take that site because it's a lot easier to defend. I made rank cipher guides for Ascent and Haven if you want to check them out as well as tons of other cipher contents on my channel. Thanks for watching!